Hello and welcome to the Hiram Connection with your host, Unique and Janice, where today's topic is Enough is Enough, the Power of No. Now, with everything going on in the world today, I want to kind of talk in general terms why this two letter word is so important. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that we associate this word and surround it with negativity. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were young and as kids, we grew up always hearing the word no. Right. It's no, that's not nice. And no, we don't do that. And so I think it's really ingrained in us that no equates to bad. And we fail to realize when we get older that those two letters Mm -hmm. can actually be our saving grace. Right. And Basically, you have to embrace the fact that it's okay to say no. Why? Because I feel like it allows us to set boundaries. And then also, in another aspect, it's that self-care for us. Because when you strategically say no, it causes less stress. And then also those unwanted demands that people tend to make on you. Mm -hmm. And then I think also it fosters, you know, that refocus on what it is that you need and what you're aspiring at that time. Because sometimes if you don't say no, you can get caught up with everything that everybody else has going on Mm -hmm. and you forget about you in the midst of all of that. You know, I just think that ultimately we can feel obligated because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be perceived as being selfish or rude and instead of just unequivocally saying no we turn around and tell people well maybe I can get around to doing it or I don't know we'll see and it's that crazy psychological cycle that Mm -hmm. type of behavior that we actually are end up saying yes right and we tend to do things that one we don't either have the time to do Two, we don't want to do them. Mm -hmm. Or three, we're just not able to do it. We can't Mm -hmm. fit it into that schedule. Right. And, you know, we do want to be liked and we want to be accepted. And that's a natural thing to to actually want. But there's too many negative impacts that can occur with all of that. And I can definitely agree with that. And I'll use as working as an admin HR professional and looking at it from an office office aspect, I think a strategic no can mark the beginning of a thoughtful and intentional conversation about your workload, your role definition, and just the dynamics of the office overall. And what I mean by that is, for example, when we commit to too many projects or assignments or favors, we'll Mm -hmm. call them, (laughs) you know, in the office. Hey, can you do this for me? Right. (laughs) Right. And knowing that we are not going to be able to complete them, we wind up creating those false expectations, I think. And it tends to create more work for ourselves than what we probably normally anticipated or projected. Mm -hmm. And in, in retrospect, that can cause stress resentment, and a whole high level of frustration. Because we're putting in other people's needs Mm -hmm. or wants before ours. Right, right. So, and I think just, you know, that and just thinking about the word no, you definitely have to look at utilizing that in a strategic manner because I think it's important because you can't do or be everything to everybody at the end of the day because there's only one you. And what we have to do is that we have to find a way to break that cycle. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we do that is that we have to really start paying attention to when we, one, either unintentionally or two, intentionally say yes, when we truly mean no. Right. And some strategies on how to say no Mm -hmm. is that, one, we just need to make sure that we say it right. You know, I tell Brandon all the time, it's not just what you say. Mm -hmm. It's important how you say what you say. Say that again. (laughs) It's not what you say, Mm -hmm. but it's how you say what you say. Right. That is really, really important. You got to make sure that you're respectful, you know, 
and that you provide as much inside of what you're saying, like the content Mm -hmm. into your context, because they're two different things, right? as possible to the person who's coming to you making any type of request of you that Mm -hmm. you know you're not going to be able to do. And, you know, no is such a simple word. It's only two letters in our Mm -hmm. English um, vocabulary. Right. And so, you know, there's so many different types of no's. The unassertive no. We'll start with that one. And what do we mean by the unassertive no? That's basically the one, the no, that there's all this rationalizing and excuses as to why, (laughs) you know, there are so many reasons. Like you're trying to convince the person to say, oh, well, I'm going to say no because this, that, and the other. And, oh, I'm just, you know, this is my thought process of why I'm going to say no. So it's just a bunch of just, you know, like I said, basically excuses and rationalizing as to why you want to say no. And unfortunately, that can backfire on you because it'll sound like you're being ineffective and like you um, have to make excuses to support why you saying no, which is pretty much not a strong, <laughs> you know, to right. Be <laughs> and there's the aggressive no. The one that's done with contempt that, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm you not can, doing that. <laughs> you can do it your own self. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's perceived as some type of aggression and an attack on a person that's mm-hmm. making the request. It's like, you must be out your mind. You must be crazy. It's funny because yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one of those transparent moments? The transparent moments. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, what had happened was I was visiting you yesterday mm-hmm. and you had called me because I had cooked some beef stew. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I have a hungry 13 year old and he ate the rest of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was Sunday dinner. And so um, we were stopping off to get some food, right? Mm -hmm. And what had happened was he had a choice of where he wanted to go. So Mm -hmm. since you know how where you live at, right? If y'all don't know, my sister stays on one side of the street. And then there's restaurants on her side. And then where the traffic gets real busy, there's restaurants on the other (laughs) side of the street. Mm -hmm. And so, right, before I had called her back, since Brandon had ate all the beef stew, I had asked him, I said, hey, dude, where you want to go get something to eat, right? And he gave me his choices. And, you know, he's on this health conscious kick where he's like, okay, let's go to KFC, get some grilled chicken. So we pulled into KFC, which is on my sister's side of the street. And Mm -hmm. we asked, don't uh hum me with attitude. (laughs) And so we had asked (laughs) the lady at at the little, you know, counter already. We went through the drive through so not the counter, in the little speaker box. Hey, um, did you have grilled chicken? Now, at that time, I had already called, put Brandon on call auntie duty so he can go ahead and call and ask if she wants something to eat since he had ate all the beef stew and I was going to be the nice sister and go bring some food. But in my head, we was coming to get some work done, so we're going to make one stop. We had already discussed this when we left the house. Mm-hmm. So... Right when he called, I'm like, hey, Nick, we're stopping by KFC, and you want something from KFC? Now, mind you, KFC is not my, no no pun intended for any KFC lovers, that is not my first choice of where to eat. (laughs) So what had happened was, right, (laughs) what had happened was is that um, she was like, well, uh, do they have any grilled chicken? I didn't say it like that. And so I heard it. Ask the lady in the box, hey, do you have any grilled chicken? So she said, I have a thigh and a wing and a leg and a whatever else. And so I rolled up the window. I asked her, one moment, please. So by that time, I already knew she really didn't want KFC. So Brenda was like, well, mom, I'll go ahead and I'll get the famous bowl. And so... I rolled down the window and I said, okay, um, I was like, hey, Nick, do you want, well, and then she said another restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I said, I ain't going over there. We making one stop. I'm coming to get some work done. 
No, she and, mind you, she did not say it like that. So let's be clear. <laughs> and and what had happened was she was mean, y'all. And my um, <laughs> aggressiveness, <laughs> my sister and my aggressive no of saying I wasn't going to go across the street to go get the other form of brand of food that she liked. Mm-hmm. She told me, well, you can come on over. I'm getting in my car and I'm going to go ahead and get da 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 And so as I'm pulling into her second parking space, she's pulling out. She didn't speak. She didn't say anything. So my aggressive <laughs> no caused a situation of uncomfortability because when she came back with her other form of food, she didn't say nothing to me. She talked to my nephew or her nephew, my son, <laughs> and everything else of that nature. So we have to be very careful of how we say no, especially when it comes to our hungry family members. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Now, that was a long, drawn-out version of what happened yesterday. But mind you, she didn't tell you all that we did talk once I had some food in my system. It came in the room where she was. They don't want to know do all that. We, to do we anyway. talk about saying no and the aggression <laughs> of saying no. So we have to be very careful Ooh. about how we say our no's. And our final no oh, is... Oh, goodness. Anyway, the final no is the assertive no. And that is the one that we want to make sure that we utilize. Right. And that's the one that's simple and direct. And I've actually adopted that over the years because you have to learn basically when enough is enough. And you have to know that as much as I would like to help you, I can't do that because I already have all this going on. And, you know, going back to the workplace, once again, it's like you want to be helpful You want to offer a helping hand, but when your plate is just as full or even fuller than some, then you have to weigh that and just basically be honest and be truthful and say, you know what, I would love to help you and I would even offer up my help, but I already have, you know, this, that or the other, or I already have made this commitment. So... I'm, I can't be able to help you at this time. And I think when you're just authentic and you're honest in that manner and you're simple and direct, you're not being rude and you're talking just like I'm talking now, I think it's received a whole lot better. And then you don't you know, deal with that fallout from it being misinterpreted that you're being rude or passive or whatever, you know, with the other two no's that we talked about prior to this one. Right, because an assertive no can in fact be a very powerful productivity tool Mm -hmm. because it just sets clear priorities. Right. And so after the break, we're going to be talking about things that we need to say no to Mm -hmm. to maintain our well-being. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Hiram Connection with your host, Unique and Janice, where today we're discussing the power of no. Now, before the break, we mentioned about being assertive and utilizing the word no, Mm -hmm. which is powerful in itself. And what I wanted to discuss now, bringing it back to more of a personal no, Mm -hmm. is what must we say no to in order to maintain health and wellness Mm -hmm. for ourselves? What are some things that you feel that we got to say no to? Um, I think one of the first things, and this will probably sound uh, (laughs) very uh, special, but just (laughs) learning to say no to people. Granted, we have to interact with people on a day-to-day basis, but what I essentially mean by that is those people who seek to just drain the life 
out of you. The leeches, baby. Yes. <laughs> you know, that is probably one of the toughest things, I think, as um, human beings that we deal with, essentially, on a day-to-day basis. It's just you always have, you know, there are a lot of great people out there, but there are always those select few that it's just their energy and just being just drains <laughs> the life out of you and the air out of the room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's essentially because, you know, it's always something they need. It's always something they're trying to depend on you about. There's always complaints. You always have to, you know, you're like the go-to person that they feel like they need to go to to unload life on. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you know. you're always pouring into somebody else, mm-hmm. but nobody's pouring back into Correct. you. Got Correct. it. And that's just, you know, that can be so so draining and stuff. And then it's like you, not only those people, just the people, the negative folks, you know, when we talk about people, it's like they're never happy. There's always complaints. It's always, you know, no positive affirmations or no positive words <laughs> to you mm-hmm. on a daily basis. So it's just you have to learn for those segment of folks you have to learn to say no to, you know, if they're coming to complain, no, I don't have time. I have stuff to go do. You know, um, the ones that are always trying to be negative. No, thank you. I don't want to hear that. You know, like those type of no's and you can do it, you know, and be more eloquent about it. But I think it's essentially uh, important. Sometimes you just got to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> like, hell no. <laughs> but Well, you know, I'm a diplomatic person, so I try to be diplomatic. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah, there's sometimes you do have to come out the box. And for us, that New York City comes out and then it's like a whole nother conversation (laughs) and stuff. So um, but, you know, for the most part, the southern part of me wins out. So (laughs) I'm a southern lady. Right. But I just say, yeah, I, you know, on a serious note, just saying no to those people that are a constant drain or a, or a constant negative beings is essentially important when it comes to that word no. Mm-hmm. Another thing I would say to say no to is self-sabotage. And we can be so guilty of doing that, um, especially when we're faced with challenges in our lives. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, to think that... Um, oh my God, the the world is going to end because, you know, this happened. Or for example, say you're standing on a, a platform and you see a train approaching and it's like, you really want this to be your train. It's like, yeah, that's my train. I'm going to my destination. But lo and behold, it's not your train. So just because it's not your train does not mean that um, you're not still going to get to your destination. So to bring that into layman's term, when you have goals and aspirations, and we've talked about this in a number of our podcast episodes, and you know, you're working towards that. So you could say like the the train is one of those vehicles that mm-hmm. you're utilizing, going back to that train analogy, um, to get to that particular destination with your goals and your aspirations, just because that vehicle is not the vehicle for you to utilize. That does not mean that you then turn off your mentality to say, oh, well, I can't do this or, oh, you know, I'm never going to achieve whatever that, you know, goal or aspiration is because that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to not self-sabotage just because one vehicle didn't get you there. Correct. You know, you have to stay positive. You have to know that you know that you know That what you have, you know, what you desire was deep down in your soul. It's going to happen. You believe that. And don't get into that negative. When we talked about the negative people, don't be that negative person who's self-sabotaging yourself, you know, and make you get out of the realm of thinking that you won't make it to where you're trying to be, you know, or where you're trying to go, essentially. Well, with that, I know... The things that I realized that I had to say no to, one, cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, <laughs> on a serious oh my note, goodness. 
<laughs> Y'all see what I have to deal with, right? <laughs> That's another thing for another day. But gotcha. on a serious note, <laughs> the most important thing that's on the top of my list that I have to say no to Mm -hmm. is not living in my purpose. And to be honest, when I was out of alignment, I was stagnant and I felt it. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that a lot of the things that I was doing, I was just doing it to do it. It was all done in vain. And I knew that there was that thing, that something that was bigger and better waiting for me on the other side, all I had to do was just get up and focus on what I wanted to accomplish. Right. I realized that life was too short not to do what it was that I love to do and that I truly wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And when you are walking in your purpose and what your soul intended for you to do, you experience a freedom and a happiness that you just never thought was possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying personally, that's number one on my list. I will never not continue to strive to live in my purpose and what I was called to do. So, and that's important because, and how that ties in with the, when you say no, it's because when you know that your life is purpose driven you have to learn to say no to the things that are going to interfere with what you're supposed to be doing Mm -hmm. to walk in that purpose. And at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. You know, it's like, no, that's not aligned with what I'm supposed to be doing or where I'm supposed to be heading. I know it's been shown to me. So guess what? No is no. Right. (laughs) And that's, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Today's conversation was definitely enlightening, and it's our hope that our listeners would truly discover and embrace the power of no, and utilize that to walk in your purpose and live your best life. So on that note, thank you all for tuning in. We truly appreciate your support. Yes, we do. And as we always say, real sisters, real talk. Bye. The Hiram Connection is all over social media. We are currently on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We would like to thank those who are already following us and encourage those who are getting to know us through this podcast to connect with us because we are very interactive on social media.